Well, hello, hello, hello. You are listening to the No Braiders Empowering Possibilities Show. These are dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, invitations to ahas, a little bit of science and a dash of behavioral psychology, and a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh. I'm the author of the teen and parent empowerment curriculum called Level Up. And you are listening to episode number 30. Is going with the flow the same as being in the flow? In 1914, I had the pleasure of being on a cruise to one of the most beautiful places that are connected to the United States. And if any of you have ever traveled to the beautiful wilderness of Alaska, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's one of those places that has the most amazing awe factor from the rugged wilderness to those breathtaking glacier fields. I tell you, it was exciting. Even the thrill of panning for gold and the thrill of fishing for the ocean bounty, that country left an impression on me. And the impression was that mother nature had an amazing way of painting the stage for poignant examples of strength and survival. Not only for the people that lived up there with those extremes in temperature and the diminished daylight during certain times of the year, but also the wildlife and knowing that they had to head into and face those extremes outside unprotected, but with a hardiness that grew them big and strong. I'll never forget when we came off the cruise ship with my two young boys and the activity that we had chosen for the day was to see in person the migration upstream of the salmon. I myself had experienced that 20 years prior, but when I had gone with a group, we had actually fished the rivers for those salmon. And I have to say, that was one of the thrills of my life to bring in a 30 pound salmon. Now, for some of you, that may seem small, but you know, I was a mountain girl that usually fished for five, six, seven, eight pound trout. So the thrill of the tug of war with that beautiful fish was an experience in itself that I'll never forget. But that day, we had no fishing poles and our intent was just to watch the migration up the rivers. We pulled over our rental car to the designated spot that they had indicated that this would be the river to watch and saw that the river was half full of water and half exposed because the water flow had been diminished that year. So what we saw was not only awe-inspiring, but can I say it was horrifying. There were fish that were leaping from one water spot to the next and fish that lay dead in pools with only one inch of water. There were many streams that the salmon could go up, but They had selected this one, and today there were few that were finding a spot on the river that would afford enough water that a huge sandwich could continue to forge upstream. So we were desperately trying to fling some of them from where they were, still breathing in some of these deeper pools, only to find them fight their way back around and try to get back up in the same spot that they were at. One of my sons was so traumatized by this holy man, he ran to the car because he couldn't stand to watch them die. And I, with my other son, we kind of drank in the evolution of the life cycle of the salmon and tried to understand what we were observing. I didn't realize it right at that moment. These mighty fish, they were teaching me some valuable lessons. They were unstoppable. They gave their life for their mission and there was no turning back. Later, I learned that that river we were used at was usually two to three feet deeper in water. And so what a game changer that would have been for all those fish that lie in no water. But their life cycle was part of the cycle of life as bear and birds of prey and other animals would feast that night. So their efforts were not in vain because it was a piece of the puzzle of the cycle of life, as dramatic as it was for us that day. So what is our piece in the cycle of life? What is our driving force? What have we identified as our mission, our contribution? The thing that we want to have talked about at our funeral or our wake? 
what will people say we stand for and exemplify it? These are deep questions, all from the example of this mighty salmon. But a question came to me that day. Is it the same to go with the flow as it is to be in the flow? So think of the schools of fish in the oceans or rivers that navigate together. They take twists and turns, almost like beautiful synchronized swimmers. They seem to have purpose together, right? Are they going with a flow or are they in the flow? Does going with the flow mean the same as being in the flow? What do you think? So here are some thoughts from a couple friends of mine. Hey friends, is going with the flow the same thing as being in the flow? In my opinion, that would be no. Going with the flow is more, in my mind, passive, just kind of letting things happen as they do. Now is one better than the other? I'm not sure. Are you gonna get the same outcome that you hoped for? I don't know for sure. On the other hand, being, uh, being in the flow, to me, is being more mindful, more thoughtful, more uh, state, uh, in a state of being, more conscious, more purposeful. Good morning. Being in the flow versus going with the flow, two very different things. Going with the flow is just joining in with what's going on around you. Being in the flow is more intentional. It takes faith and it takes action to get you in that flow. They're a powerful duo in creation. There's a saying, dead fish go with the flow. The assumption is that to get upstream, we have to be full of life. And to get there, sometimes it's going with the flow and with the crowd and synchronizing our moves with each other. But sometimes it takes us understanding what we want, what we want to create in our life. And then swimming in a different pond, a different way with a different kind of mind. So what is it that gets your fins on fire, your head pointed upstream and so engaged that you find the flow of your purpose, the flow of your destiny, whether it's a project, a virtue you want to espouse or a relationship that you want to cultivate, the sky and the ocean really is the limit. So today I wanna to explore flow using the acronym of FISH, F-I-S-H, since we're honoring our salmon friends in today's show. So when we want to go for something, when we want to accomplish something, when we want to become something, when we, the flow to be something, first of all, we've got to find a goal, find F, find a goal, a target, the mission, the destination. And then we're going to visualize. Yes, visualize where you're going. It takes creating an energetic blueprint to then bring it down on paper or on a computer to bring it to life, the thing that's in your head. Nikola Tesla, oh my gosh, he's fascinating to study. He could envision machinery in his head and then watch the machinery run and see where a problem would be with a cog or a part and then bring it down onto paper and it would run. Okay, and many of us are not gonna be like Nikola Tesla. And we put something down on paper though, we can see what needs to be fine-tuned. We can dissect it into manageable pieces and we can assign timelines. So back, go back to the salmon. Their mission was internalized from when they were little. They survived in the fresh water, but their internal GPS led them to the seas and the oceans where they could feed, fatten up and get all the nutrition that they need while they were at sea. But then that same internal GPS that led them to the sea, that led them was going to lead them back home where they started their life. That same internal compass that led them down the streams, memorizing the smells and attributes of the rivers and the streams would be that same compass, that guidance system that would lead them back up that same stream against resistance, against odds, against predators, against the unknown. And they would go forward because they had a goal, a target, a mission, and a destiny. Now, I invite you to consider, we too have an internal guidance system. We were birthed into this earth. We left our home for those that believe in a pre-existence and for those who believe in a life after. When we get really still, 
and allow, there are signals, promptings, helping us, trying to guide us home again. We may be veiled from our afterlife, but for those that believe, there is help to help our guidance system or get it to where it can be. So there is that goal, that target, that mission or destination, but let's take it to the pond where we are currently swimming. What is that project, that attribute, that mission, that idea, that creation that you feel in your heart, in your head, and you desire and you want to do? When you get quiet and meditate, envision and dream about it, what does it look like, smell like, taste like, feel like? What does it sound like? Because after, you have to know what it is so that when you arrive, you will recognize it. Unless we define it, we could create any old thing. And when we think, man, this isn't really what I was expecting. So create what you want to expect, right? The salmon knew they were in the right course going upstream because they could see it. They could smell it. They could taste it. They could touch it. They could feel it. They memorized that on their way down to the ocean. That's how they knew they were in the right stream. That's how they knew they were in the right course and when they were off course and needed to go a different direction. Is that not fascinating? So a goal undefined, a destiny undecided, a mission undiscovered leads us in circles. Traction happens with forward motion. So there are lots of different ways that we can gauge whether a goal is the right thing, a good thing, the thing we should do. But a litmus test that I was taught years ago was to think about from five years from now, if you're there and you're thinking about this goal or this attribute or this project, would you say, how would I feel if I had accomplished that? And think about that. Then also think if you five years from now, if you look back and said, how would I feel if I had not accomplished that? And there are some goals that you, when you put that litmus test, you'll go, uh, I really wouldn't care. And so that's not the goal. That's, so that's not the thing to invest your time in. But if it's like, oh man, I would be so sad if I hadn't done that. And that's your indication. That's your goal light. That's your target. That's your upstream target. So fish, find the goal, the target, the mission. The I is initiate action. Jump in and start swimming. Overthinking is probably one of the best friends of fear. Resistance wants us to delay our success whenever possible. So taking action pushes away fear, pushes away resistance, and gives us momentum. We don't need to be perfect. We just need to accomplish something. And sometimes just getting in the water and swimming is better than doing nothing. There is no traction that happens from non-motion. So just do it. Motion causes motion. Action causes motion. Delay is the death of progress. So what is that small, even incremental thing? You've heard of the compound effect. What is that small incremental thing that you can do every single day to get in the habit to start getting us on the way to our goal? So can you imagine the salmon overthinking the task at hand? It's time to leave the ocean that's been my home. I've been fattening here. And now it's time to go upstream to where I was birthed, lay fresh eggs, protect so they'll be protected, make sure they get fertilized. <sighs> I'm exhausted thinking about doing this another year. I do this every year. Now remember the salmon lives between two and seven years on average. But no, they just do it. They start swimming, right? It's about jumping in and creating movement. Once we start to move, we can get traction. And even if we have to change course, it's easier to turn a moving car than it is a parked car, right? It's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. And so as you look at the fish that seems to be almost still in the water, he's not struggling to stay static. He's designed to go against the flow. In fact, as his head is facing upstream, it's because it's how he breathes the oxygen because the water comes in his mouth and goes out his gills 
creating an oxygenation from the opposition or the force that's coming after him. It's his facing into the opposition that enhances his life. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed when we look at the entirety of a project and the scope paralyzes us with fear. But that fear is resistance. A way to overcome this fear is to work backwards. Start at the finish, what's the finish gonna look like, and then work backwards, diagramming out incremental steps and management chunks. And then it's easier as far as. But we have to initiate action. Dory, I love from Finding Nemo. She said, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. That's what we do. We swim, right? She didn't say, oh, leave yourself open to predators, hide in a coral and starve to death. No, she said we swim. We just get swimming. So if we go with a flow, it's going to take us wherever the current is leading us. But what if it's not where you want to go or need to go? But if we get our fins flowing, if we get our fins going, and initiate that action, we'll know if we're on the right course. Okay, so that was F-I. S is stop self-sabotaging. No one gets everything right the first time. Don't be so hard on yourself if you don't immediately succeed. Learn from your mistakes. Just because you failed at something doesn't mean you're a failure. Remember, fail, F-A-I-L, stands for first attempt in learning. (laughs) Isn't that kind of freeing to look at fell that way? Learning from your mistakes along the way, along with positive self-talk. Now that's a recipe for success. And that's a recipe that will get us to the second time. And maybe it takes two or three different times. And we just keep swimming and we just keep trying. So tell yourself you can do it even when you don't always believe it. So H handle the resistance. Now, this is the big hunk of this whole thing. Those salmon taught me were about resistance. So prepare for resistance. Really, we have to prepare for resistance. Not only is it going to happen, it's part of the happening. Resistance will happen in one of two ways. It's either going to be external or it's going to be internal. Bank on it. Or take the resistance to the bank. So what does that mean? Well, there's a popular myth, and maybe it's unspoken, that says everything should be easy if you're doing the right thing. But that's not true. Resistance happens, especially to things that are the right thing, especially things that will make a difference, especially things that are a movement, especially things that will change the world for the better. So bank on resistance. The flow is using the resistance. It's using it to your advantage. It's creating that strength. It's indicating for you that you're on the right way. If what you're doing has no significance, if there's no growth attached to it, If there's no resistance, then it may not be the right thing. Remember, for a fish facing up stream, they use the resistance to oxygenate their body and to get the nutrition in, right? But when we talk about resistance, the two, the internal or external, internal resistance, one of the things we talk about is our comfort zone. Our brain is wired and our subconscious is wired to keep us in a place of familiarity, a place of comfort. And when we stray from that, when we start getting out of our comfort zone, when we start changing things, when we inch towards the unfamiliar with the things that make us uncomfortable, we retreat or we halt. And that analogy is like we hit against a rock in in the water, a dam in the stream. We feel stuck and we start to second guess that what we've decided to do, the direction we're going, has got to be the wrong way. And that's not the time to back off because that's the time when we know that we've hit the boundaries of our comfort zone. And that's the place of the greatest growth. That's when there's a place of expansion. That's not the time to stop. How many times in our culture or environment have we been taught that if it's, if it's uncomfortable, then don't go there. 
but there are some insidious and evil things that when are for dangerous when when we, we have to be aware of those and we're not talking about that we're talking about resistance and when we can put off a little bit of uncomfort and sustain ourselves we can get on the other side for that long-term goal so sometimes resistance comes from the external it comes from others and we need to judiciously use the advice that comes to us because we do have those who have our best interests of heart. There are those that have some clarity and things to consider. But we have to realize sometimes it's the piece of people closest to us that can keep us back from doing those things that we know is a dream in our heart or to see the possibilities where no one else has ever created them. Thank goodness Albert Einstein didn't listen to all those who made fun of his lack of formal education when it came down to his pursuit of becoming a father of science, right? Think of all the inventions of convenience that we have now. When someone said, that's impossible, that can't be done, but yet it exists today. When the scriptures, some of the scriptures say, be as a little child. There's many virtuous reasons for that, but also it's the child's mind is the imagination where there's no restraints or protocol. I laugh when I hear people say, well, you know what they say? They say it can't be done. And I'm thinking, who are the they? And who made them the expert on things? So yes, consider advice. But there are those who really are looking out for us. And there's those who are there to thwart our progress. Now let's go back to the internal resistance. That's a resistance we have to stop the chatter in our own head that defeats us. If we do not have the skills to be able to choose the thoughts we want to linger in our mind, if we don't have the skills to choose the words or to think the thoughts that we, uh, that, that we should believe, then the battle will be won or lost in our mind. A level up, we have a pretty deep type into words and thoughts and <laughs> and actions and developing those skills. And you can listen to a lot of that in the prior podcast, but I watched those salmon struggling to get up those streams, half of them in water, but their dorsal fins exposed by inches and some of them throwing themselves forward to get into the next pool of water. And yes, they are DNA wired to hit their goal, to strive to go forward in a way that was inspiring I saw where they wanted to go and I saw the struggle and I saw them try, try, try. But I don't think in the mind of a salmon was ever the thought, oh, wait, maybe I should go back. You know, I was thinking this was going to be like an, an Alaskan cruise, but I had no idea that I was going to be forced to fight my way through all these things. We too are DNA wired to succeed. We have within us a GPS that can get us to where we need to go. But because of life's experiences and our interpretation or even misinterpretations of what life is, we limit ourselves on how we respond in life. So we really have to clean up a lot of our misinterpretations or things that have happened to us so that we can allow that to be pushed aside so that we can go forward. We know that we approach life, we think of our self-concept as about how we feel about ourselves because of the experiences we've had, how we've interpreted life. And when we learn to reinterpret those things, when we learn the skills to be able to change the energy behind these experiences, they no longer are in our way. And it's a game changer. So when we look at coming up against the edges of the comfort zone, remember there's all sorts of things that are gonna be unfamiliar, it's going to be scary. We won't know how to go through at times. We're afraid of failure. But when you look at those salmon, there wasn't one that leaped forward and fell back and said, okay, well, I tried. That didn't work. I didn't make it up the waterfall. I didn't get into that bigger phone. Well, I really think if we could put a, a microphone on the thought process of the salmon, it would be, I didn't get up there yet. I didn't get to that point yet, but watch me try. Watch me go forward. It was interesting because we were watching some of these fish go from a little bit of deep water to just almost a dry ground and where they're flopping, going to die. And we were picking them up and putting them on the other side with a little more water. 
And they were coming back around that same direction because that's what they had been DNA imprinted to do, to come that direction. And sometimes we could be banging our head against the rocks, not getting to our destinations. There are times when we have to reevaluate, but their persistence is what was so incredible. I mean, it's indelibly impressed on my mind, the visual that I saw, that I smelled, that I witnessed. And for those that had already died earlier, the persistence of their strength, their determination, their focus. If only our minds could embrace that same thing. If only we knew our worth and our mission and were so driven and persistent and not worried about failing and not worried about what somebody else thought was dumb stuff. But imagine what we could spawn, the ideas we could spawn, realizing that there is going to be opposition and we prepare ourselves and we get our internal GPS focus there. Think about one of your goals right now. Because life is short and the clock is ticking and it's time to get moving. It's time to get swimming, my friends. More than ever, the world needs exceptional people with courage to deliver their gifts in a positive way. If we go with the flow, it's going to take us wherever the current is leading us. If it's not where we want to go, then we need to have a burning desire to do something different, to fish, find a goal, a target, a mission, initiate action by swimming, stop our self-sabotage, and handle the resistance. Being in the flow is about becoming, it's about being present, it's about experiencing. That only happens when we get our fins in action. The pearls we can find along the way can only be found when we get swimming, when we are present, when we are looking for them. My friend, your upstream adventure is calling you. Are you going to stay with the flow? <laughs> or are you going to get into the flow? Thanks for tuning in today. I'm confident that your flow can be found when you fish. We'll see you next week.